Welcome back once again to DIY Golf Car Garage. Today we're going to be working on a 1992 Club Car DS. We've got here a lift kit, suspender lift kit made by Jake's that we're going to be installing. We're going to start on the front end, but first before we get started on the car itself, I'm going to do a little pre-assembly on the front spindles. Now if you'll notice here on the front spindles, the bolts that hold the spindle to the bracketry, these it will not fit. So what I'm going to do is take a 5 16th drill bit, pre-drill the holes so that it will slide directly through. Now then, on the inside of each spindle, it'll have the part number of the lift kit, and this one is 6230, and either a P or a D. This says P, so that means this is the passenger side. That the steering arm for the passenger side will have two locations to put your tie rod. So we know this one goes to the passenger side. I'll go ahead and put all four bolts into both sides, get these tightened up, and then we'll install them on the front. Now that we've got our front spindles partially assembled, what we're going to do now is come up to the front. I've taken my tires off. Now I've got to take the hub assembly off. If your dust cap happens to be plastic or a rubbery material, you've got the wrong lift kit. This lift kit is designed for the older cars that do have the metal dust caps on. So let's go ahead and take this thing off. Now that we got that off, a little cotter pin going through the very center of this castle nut. We'll need to remove it. Now we'll take the castle nut off. We'll slowly pull the whole hub assembly off keeping everything in place because we will reuse all these parts. Now that we've got that off, we'll take the kingpin nut on top, remove it. Okay now, we will take the cotter pins off the tie rod ends. Now we'll loosen these nuts and take our tie rod ends off. Now if you have to, you can also use a pickle fork. What we gotta do is separate from the spindle arm the tie rods. Get these out of the way. We can lift the upper portion up. Turn this down. Be sure to remove your outer washer. We will be reusing that. 
and remove your spindle. Now then, we're ready to put the new spindle on, but first we're going to clean the kingpin up and re-grease it. You can use a can of brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner. Both will do great. Now before installing your new spindle, get you some automotive grease, general multi-purpose, and just lightly lube the kingpin. Then in reverse order, we'll just put everything back on. Now while putting your tie rods back on, make sure you align your castle nut with the hole going through the bolt so that we can put our cotter pin back in. Once we do this, we'll come back down to where the spindle comes out. This will be a great time to check your bearings and see if they need to be repacked with grease and this one does. Now that we've got our bearings packed, we'll put just lightly coat on your spindle. Slide our hub assembly on. Okay, once we get our castle nut on here, get it lined up so that we can put our cotter pin on once again. Then we'll go to the other side and do everything that we did with this side. Once we're completely done, we get our tires and wheels mounted on here. Then we can come back and check our toe in. Keep in mind to check to adjust your toe in, you'll loosen this jam nut on the back side of our main drag link that adjusts our toe in. If our steering wheel is, happens to be off one side or the other, we can actually adjust the steering by loosening this jam nut and this one and adjusting it here. So let's get this thing put together, then we'll get started on the back. Okay, now that we've got the front end completed, tires and wheels on it, let's get started and let's put the lift on the back. Okay, so far what I've done is I've taken the back tires off, but prior to that, I've jacked the back of the car up. It is on jack stands. And I've actually got the jack underneath the engine supporting it because in just a moment when we take off the shocks we'll loosen the rear shocks and uh, take our springs out and set them on top of the axle we're going to have to lower the engine compartment down so that we can put our springs on top of the axle so now let's get busy take these shocks loose Now, to remove the leaf springs.
Now that we got the shots loose from the bracketry, we're going to take the springs loose. Now before you go ahead and uh, loosen the nuts and bolts, go ahead and use your floor jack and jack up your rear arm just a little bit to relieve the tension off, off the springs. Okay, now that we've got the leaf springs out from both sides, there's a little wire bracket up here that holds the brake cable. It's one on each side. Let's go ahead and remove these, and then we can start installing our springs, but put them on top of the axle this time. And to begin with, we're just going to do the front because there's some other things we've got to do to the bottom portion here. So, let's get these wire brackets off. Now that we got the springs taken off on both sides, not up above here where the springs were in the front, there's a little wire cable, it's a little bracket that actually holds the brake cable. What we'll now do now is take them off both sides, then we're going to come over here on the base plate where the U-bolts were originally going through and we're going to drill them out so that they will accept the new Jake's heavy duty U-bolts. Uh, we'll drill them out to half inch then right up underneath the axle in that same plate provided in the kit is a little allen head bolt with a nylon nut locking washer i mean nut we'll actually put it in the very center tighten it down that way we can keep the axle from shifting around so let's get just get started with this Okay, now that I've got the Allen head bolts on each side, got them tightened down real good. And as you can see, it's a tight place to get them into, and I ended up having to use some uh, a wrench and a set of vise grips to hold that head down and tighten it up. But now, both of them are all good and tight, and it's time to put our springs on. We'll start in the front, lay them across, but before I get started, it was such a bear to get out. I'm gonna use me some PB blaster so it'll be a lot smoother going back together. Now for the other side. Okay, now that we've got our springs securely mounted on both sides, now it's for the lift blocks. The lift blocks will actually sit right over where the springs will go. And you'll just need to tap it down in place. And then we'll put the one on the other side. And then we'll put our top plate, which is going to go across the top of the spring so we can mount our shocks. Once we get all this together, we'll put our you bolts in and get everything tightened up so always remember when you put these top plates on the portion that comes up towards the shop will go towards the inside of the car so let's get these things mounted get this thing done nice. now we've got the lift kit completely bolted up what we're going to do now is reattach the shocks the bolts come with the new lift kit that so we'll just put through the hole that's provided. Slide the shock back on the new bolt. And then what we'll do is use the original nut and washer and put all this back together. We'll do both sides and then tighten this up. Okay, we've now got the shocks secured to the upper bracketry. And 
now we've got everything ready to go I did notice when I was going back checking all nuts and bolts make sure everything was secured that this ground wire had came loose from the starter generator it was not in the instructions and I was underneath the car and didn't realize it was getting ready to pop well it did so for future reference let's always make sure that we take this wire loose from the starter generator or the frame so that we can have the lower arm going up and down here without causing any trouble if you have any likes or comments let us know be sure to let us comment and let us know if we missed something or if there's something else that you'd like to see either way subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next time